Theresa May suffered the embarrassment of defeat today. The Lords voted with a majority of just under 100 to insist Parliament has the final meaningful vote on the deal she gets on Brexit. The PM will whip her MPs to try and overturn this defeat when the bill comes back to the Commons, probably uh, next week. Now, Theresa May, May is hailed as the most unassailable Prime Minister we've had for years. She's got a weak opposition and a united party. But when you think on it a little, you remember she only has a small majority in the Commons, so she's vulnerable on all sorts of thorny issues, such as Brexit or grammar schools or the number of refugees we take in. And that's why some colleagues, including William Haig in his uh, Daily Telegraph column today, have said she should call a general election to strengthen her position. Uh, Nick Watt, our political editor, is here. Nick, how um, popular is that view among Conservatives? Well, Downing Street gave the William Haig idea pretty short shrift, but I'm told there is something of a debate going on involving members of the Cabinet about whether an early election may be a good idea. Now, these Cabinet ministers accept and respect respect Theresa May's view that an election now would be wrong, what they say is if you did it right now, it would look like you were doing it for the benefit of the Conservative Party because it would be about sort of uh, exploiting Labour weaknesses uh, at a bad moment for the Labour Party. But these ministers are saying over the next two years, you may be able to mount an argument that it is in the national interest to hold an election before the due date in 2020. And the moment that they're identifying is when the government seeks to introduce the Great Repeal Bill. Now, this is the legislation that will annul the legislation underpinning our membership of the EU, and it will put all that EU legislation, the so-called Aki Communitaire, into UK law, and then the UK will be able to decide which bits of that legislation it wants to keep. And I'm told that these ministers have identified two danger points with that uh, piece of legislation. Danger point number one is when it's in the House of Lords. We've seen the House of Lords baring their teeth this week, but there's a feeling in government circles that if the Commons can overturn those amendments from the Lords, then the Lords will throw in the towel because they will not want to be accused of thwarting the will of the people on Brexit. There will be no such qualms on the Great Repeal Bill, they think. And the second danger identified by ministers is that the Scottish Parliament may say that under the original devolution settlement, that Great repeal bill needs their consent. Nick, thanks. Well, as I said, perhaps the Prime Minister may be vulnerable with such a small majority. Chris Cook's been looking at that. A busy college green here in Westminster is a sign that something is about to happen in Parliament. Tomorrow is Budget Day, which is a day when the government usually looks at its most imperious. The whole structure of the day really favours the people in power. It also comes as the Conservative Party is racking up enormous poll leads, consistently in double digits over the Labour Party. But might that mean that we're overstating just how strong Theresa May's position really is? Critically, take a look at the Lords, where the government does not have a majority. As of tonight, Theresa May has lost 24 votes in the upper house. Well, we look at issues where we can make a difference and perhaps persuade the House of Commons and the government to think again. Things like the housing bill, we've asked the Commons to think again on that, on trade union legislation, on education, indeed on some of the aspects of Brexit. Indeed, just this evening, the Lords have defeated the government again on Brexit. They've passed an amendment demanding what they call a meaningful vote by Parliament on the terms of Brexit at the end of the negotiation. One of two Lords' amendments on the Brexit bill. Everyone in this House knows that we now face the most momentous peacetime decision of our time. And this amendment, as the noble Lord has so clearly set out, secures in law the government's commitment already made to another place to ensure that Parliament is the ultimate custodian of our national sovereignty. I'm in a minority in this House because I support the views of the majority of people in this country. There are, this House is absolutely full of people who still haven't come to terms with the results of the referendum. So what now? Well, the effect of these votes is to reopen the legislation in the Commons and so potentially re-empower rebel Tory backbenchers to negotiate new concessions from Theresa May. If we take the Article 50 bill, there were small numbers of Conservative rebels on some key issues when the bill went through the Commons. 
um, notably on the rights of EU citizens to remain in the UK and on the vote, parliamentary vote at the end of the process. It's no coincidence that those are the issues that the Lords has taken up very strongly and is seeking to throw back to the Commons to ask the Commons to think again. And what it's doing really there is facilitating those negotiations between her and her backbenchers. If the backbenchers are satisfied, she will get her way, but she may need to offer them more assurances in order to get the bill through. Theresa May will ask MPs to overturn the peers' amendments, and it's plausible she might not win both of those votes. Her majority is currently just 17, and that's why the Lords can trouble the government so much. So they complain, oh, we haven't got a majority. Well, this is the first Conservative government never to have had an automatic majority in the House of Lords. But no Labour government ever had a majority in the House of Lords. You win your case, you persuade, you articulate, you make that case. And that's what the government needs to understand and needs to do. But some Tories want a quick election. They say it could mean a bigger Commons majority. And peers don't pick fights over items once they've been put in a manifesto. But at least for now, the government is grinding on. And once the Brexit negotiation starts, a voluntary election will become harder to call. Chris Cook there. Well, as you heard, one test of the Prime Minister's strength comes next week when Remainer MPs have to decide whether to support her on the Brexit bill or to side with the Lords who've amended it. The issue is whether Parliament should get a meaningful vote on any Brexit deal when it's agreed. Let's focus on that now. I'm joined by Gina Miller, who famously brought the legal case for Parliament to have a vote on Article 50. She's in Brussels. And Theresa Villiers here, former Northern Ireland Secretary and leading Brexiteer. Evening to you both. Um, Theresa Villiers, just as we were watching that, a flash came up saying Lord Heseltine has been sacked as a government advisor uh, because he rebelled on the bill. Is that showing a kind of sensitivity to all of this, a, a, a bit of a brittleness to it? Well, Michael Heseltine has a very long and distinguished record of service to the Conservative Party, but he is very much out of line with the, the majority feeling within the Conservative Party and, and indeed within the country. And so you can't tolerate his... I mean, he's not even a member of the government, is he? He's just an advisor, but you have to kind of show how tough the, the discipline is going to be. Well, I, I don't know the circumstances right. around this, but I think it was, it, it was almost inevitable when he was rebelling on such a crucially important issue. Gina Miller, um, look, let's talk about this idea of a vote at the end of the, uh, of the process. Is it the case that you would like Parliament to have the option, if they don't like the deal Theresa May comes back with, is it the case you would like them to have the option to say, look, let's just stay in the EU or let's have a referendum on staying in the EU rather than going through with, with, with Brexit? It's not about what I want, and it's actually not at the end of the process. It's in 18 months' time. We're not talking about the Great Repeal Act. It's 18 months' time when the, Mrs May comes back with that negotiated package. And it's only right that Parliament should be involved in that process. I mean, that's what my case was about, and it's what all the Leavers and uh, the Brexiteers were talking about, which is parliamentary sovereignty and Parliament be having the right to vote and to debate. And that's what's so great about the House of Lords, is that they showed that it could be done at a level that was civilised and grown up and that you could take, be respect other people's points of view. Are you, are you thinking another legal case? If Theresa May just says, forget it, I'm not interested in this and I'm going to get it through the Commons and we're going to beat the Lord, are you thinking another legal case on this would be due? Do you think there is a legal case here? Well, if you go back to the judgment in my case at the Supreme Court, it said that only Parliament could take away or diminish people's rights. And at 18 months' time, we won't know what rights have been taken away because we don't know, we don't have a crystal ball, we don't know what the package will be. And so if you look at the judgment, there is some thinking that it could be that if Mrs May bypasses Parliament and doesn't deliver on her promise, if this amendment doesn't get in, that there could be a case for us to take back to Parliament, to, say, to the court, sorry, to say, can she act on her own without Parliament? Right. Theresa Villiers, that's not, I suspect, what you want to hear, because that would mean a, a legal argument right at the climax of the Article 50 negotiation. Well, that's one of the real anxieties about these amendments. Any amendment to what is a simple bill makes it potentially justiciable, could drag it into the courts. Yield to it now, and then you won't have a case coming up in a, a 18 months' time, I suppose, would be what Gina Miller would say. I, I believe that... You know, particularly the amendment passed today is a, is a recipe for, for stalemate and disruption. I'm, I'm sure Gina Miller is entirely sincere in what she's doing, but 
I think many people who back this amendment in the House of Lords today really in their heart of heart are trying to frustrate the process. They, they've given them themselves the power to veto a deal. They've given themselves the power to veto leaving without a deal. Essentially what they want is to, to keep us in and to disrespect the result of the yeah, yeah, Gina Miller, there is a bit of a puzzle here because they have said they want the veto to be able to veto a non-deal and they want to be able to veto a deal. You could just end up in a... A twilight zone well, and nothing, couldn't you? Well, actually, the House of Lords can't do a veto. Um, they can scrutinise and give their opinion, but they can't actually veto something. But if we get back to... I don't understand why um, there's so much of this argument about um, holding up Brexit, because actually it's the Prime Minister and the government that are holding up Brexit. Just put in the two amendments. One is um, a morally right one. The other one is common sense to have a parliamentary safety net put them in, stop the ping-pong between the two houses, trigger Article 50 and get on with the complex negotiations. It's government itself that's holding up this process. I, I, I mean, for example, on EU nationals, I entirely sympathise with the sentiment of the amendment, but this is not the vehicle to deal with this question. It has to be dealt with bilaterally as part of the negotiations. And because this is it because make... it makes the end of the process unmanageable if, you, if the executive doesn't have the power to say this is the deal or, or we're going to walk out, which is effectively what Theresa May wants to be able to do, correct? Well, certainly with the amendment passed this evening, a key defect is it seeks to prevent the Prime Minister from deciding the deal on the table is not good enough, I'm going to go back to Parliament and recommend we leave without a deal. So not being able to walk away from a negotiation means that you're a the other side has you over a barrel. I'm afraid we do need to leave it there. That, that is the, just the, 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 the nub of the argument that's been, that's been raging on this. Gina Miller, Theresa Villiers, thanks both.